come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. And hey, you can help us out trying to become uh, like one of the fastest growing movie podcasts in the galaxy by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All that stuff helps us get found by other like minded folks like you. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela, Holly, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... John, what did we watch tonight? Uh, we watched a forgotten gem called New York Ninja. Mm, from the year. 1984. Directed by... Well... Okay. Here's well, what I was going to say. 1984 <laughs> and 2021. And 2021. <laughs> All right. So two years for this movie. <laughs> two years, two directors. Let's get into this. <laughs> so this film has a bit of a history. Now, the star of this movie, John Liu, mm-hmm. uh, he's a Taiwanese actor... Um, martial artist um he made probably 20 to 30 movies uh in his day Mm -hmm. um nothing too there were some hits in there some minor hits but nothing too major american movies no this is all all foreign movies this was his first this was him trying to get into gotcha um american movies okay and they hadn't shot there hadn't at this point there hadn't been any uh Ninjas in New York movies. Believe it or not. Really? What? Believe it or not. 1984? 1984. Hercules had been to New York at this point, right? Right, but not ninjas. (laughs) No, they're all Los Angeles or something, right? All the Enter the Ninjas, Revenge of the Ninjas. Yeah. They're all in LA, right? Okay. So, here we go. New York Ninja. Now, somebody from, I think, saw uh, the popularity of John Liu. Um, uh, And uh, somebody from 21st Century Films. This is a different 21st century. Not the Canon no. spinoff. Uh, I think. No, because Canon's still Cannon around in 1984. Them. Oh, did they? I think Canon bought some of them at one point, or it was rebranded as part of Canon way later on. Yeah, well, so Menachem the- Golan, when he split from Golan Yorvis, right? He started 21st century. Okay, then that would be the new. So he bought that. this company? <sighs> he bought. He Maybe? may have only. He may have only bought the name because. Who did it? Um, in 1984. Okay, 24. Let's back up a little bit. 21st Century funded the movie. They wanted to. This because, is an American company. Yes, this okay. is an American company, and they wanted to get in on obviously this very popular um, Asian films at this point. And Huge, ninjas and ninjas, hugely popular at this point. Yeah. They wanted to get on it, so they brought John Liu over, who is he's a writer, director, producer, choreographer. Um, and they wanted to make this movie with him. So they said, hey, we'll make a movie. You write, direct, come up with your thing, and we'll do it. And so they did. And in the summer of 1984, in a very guerrilla filmmaking style, they shot you New say. York Ninja. <laughs> very guerrilla. They didn't... No I permits. Couldn't no tell. No permits. <laughs> stealing Could locations. Uh, stealing background, helicopters. Background, uh, quote unquote, extras who clearly don't know that they're in a movie. Sometimes yeah. it's uh, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Some, well, yeah, sometimes it's great. I'd love to walk into a movie like this and be in it. Wouldn't mm-hmm. that be cool? Right. Wouldn't you like to just randomly see somebody filming something on the street 20 years ago and then like 20 years later, just like, I'm in that movie. Mm-hmm. I yeah, saw but, them filming that. But there's some scenes where I'm not convinced that people knew cameras were running. Like the camera yeah. is inside a car and you're watching like somebody get oh, yeah. mugged on the street. And then a ninja runs up <laughs> and then like a camera crew runs up and then mm-hmm. like other people. And you're like, what? In the you fu-? can you can absolutely <laughs> pinpoint the people that were just walking by. Yes. yes. You can yeah. see it. The closest I've come to that is when I was in New York once they were filming Ray Donovan and I walked through it and didn't know they were filming until I walked through. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> so are you in Ray Donovan? Am I might be in Ray Donovan. I'll have to go be, back and look. That but would be amazing. Yeah. They, it was like one of those things like once you walk down the street at the end it was like hey you just agreed to like let your face be on TV because right. Ray Donovan's filming here but it's like you couldn't see that till you'd already walked through it so I was like oh oops my yeah. bad. It turns out that that's not the case for music videos. <laughs> I accidentally walked into a flow ride of music video set when I was in Vegas uh-huh. they did not like that. Oh you get that mad? No. Yeah. They didn't like that. I was just drunk looking for daiquiris and they were like get off the set. <laughs> Sorry Flo Rida. Mm-hmm. I did not Sorry make Flo. It. Sorry Flo I did not yeah. make it in that video. <laughs> So that summer they're making this movie, but by the time they come to the end of production, 21st Century is running out of money. So the guy who headed the company was leaving at the time, and when he left, nobody was paying the bills anymore. So this movie got shut down and was never finished, and it sat in obscurity for over 30 years. What? 
until <gasps> one day. <laughs> I think it was. Was it Vinegar Syndrome? So what themselves? we're saying not finished. We're basically saying that like there's reels of film. Have they been developed? I mean, right? Are yeah, there are there are reels of film. Okay, and unedited, both, unedited, just the footage, full unedited footage about okay. eight to nine hours. I think they said. Okay, of it. Jesus. Um, but there's no like. No scripted, end, or we don't know if they got the ending or not, and you know, right? We don't know well, what parts are missing. So after it got shut down, it kind of wandered, it, it floated around a little bit. It eventually made its way to Troma, but even Troma looked at it and were like, "There is nothing to finish with this movie." Now, did they see like a like something that was cut together? There is a VHS sizzle reel out there, okay. so there is something to it that was shown to people okay. that they did have, um, but they. Saw the situation, looked at it, and we're like, ah, we, we can't do it. So Troma turned this movie down. <laughs> so nine, nine hours wow. of footage, and this was the condensed version that we got. Yes. So. Oh, boy. <laughs> fast forward many more years later. Vinegar Syndrome buys the, um, the film library of 21st century films. And in that library, when they go to pick up all the stuff for it, um, they notice a pallet sitting on the floor with... Tons of uh, film canisters on it. And they're like, well, hey, what's this? This wasn't on our film list. And the guy at 21st Century was just like, oh, don't worry about that. That's nothing. We'll throw it away. So they were going to throw this movie away. And Vinegar Syndrome being the, um, uh, what should we call They're curators of film. They're, it's Treasure film, hunters. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> film history. yeah. Never, never throw a movie away. <laughs> no. no matter what. So they kept it. Um, they And all the things were labeled New York Ninja and whatnot. Um, they had heard nothing about it and one, um, they looked at the footage, saw what they had, knew it would be a project for one day if they could put it together. But this movie came with only film, no sound, no script, no production notes, nobody, <laughs> they couldn't find people from the cast or production crew, which was very small at the time. Because there's no notes. I mean, because they, there's they no notes, no nothing. Anybody Do they, they know that it's John, what was his name, John Liu? John Liu, yes. They, they knew it was John Liu. Did yes. they find him? Like, was he, was he passed? And, no. Uh, for, when they found out and wanted to go to John Liu to, to see if he wanted to have any involvement with it, they had to go through a long process to find him. Uh, John Liu lives in a fishing shack. Somewhere yes. in the middle of Vietnam. That's what I wanted you to say. Now? That is exactly what I, The only thing that could have made that better is if you had said he lived in a monastery at the top of a mountain. Um, uh, yeah. That's perfect. Wow. Perfect. Basically, at this point. So, um, producers for Vinegar Syndrome, eventually they contacted someone who knew someone who would visit him every couple of months yes. out there. So a message of... Yes. It's, like, it's like pig. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I'm picturing like Ace Ventura 2 when they go yes. to find him in the monastery. Basically, That's what yes. I'm picturing. Basically this. So they eventually got someone to him he said, oh, no, 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 I, I don't want I don't any, do that anymore. I don't want any, God yeah. damn it, this is the best story. <laughs> I don't want anything to do no, with that. No, this is the movie. <laughs> this is, this is the movie I would need to see, is, yeah. There is, a, on this Blu-ray, there is a uh, like a 45-minute documentary. There is no traveling to there oh. to find him, but he Why did eventually, I know. Not? I know. Did eventually get him on Zoom or something? Or? No, no, I mean, not that. And like, he is out there, <laughs> man. He's just living his happy life. Yeah. Well, he's like, I don't want anything to do with it. Uh, I, good luck. I give you my blessing. Do whatever you want with it. I'm out. So John Liu was done with this. So they decided, and this was a two year, a two year endeavor for the guys of Vinegar Syndrome from the time they found it to the time that it was released. So what they did what is a journey they, they went on. I know. Right? See, this is like this is dream come true shit right wow. here. Yeah. Oh yeah. I would love it. if you wow. said no. If you said we have this. We have hours of footage of this movie from 30 years ago. It's never been released. Never been released. And your audience, like, gobbles this. They're always right, looking because, for, like, forgotten 80s movies. Right. And when they were and digitizing the film, they kept calling each other into the room, like, you got to look at this. You got to <laughs> see this. Because this is the stuff that they love. And this is the stuff they love putting out. They knew once they saw, they're like, we know the audience for this. This is It's like gold. It's like finding gold at this point. So if there's nine hours of footage, why is there not New York Ninja 2, 3, and 4? Like You they, watched the movie, gotta, right? I'm just saying, like, if they were able to cut, cut together that, I feel like we could at least get a one sequel I out mean, of the rest well, of it, right? I mean, that and also um, it brings up questions about the uh, freeze frame at the end that we will get to. Yeah, yeah, it does. There's a couple free fra freeze frames in this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple questions I have because I'm like, well, was that John Liu or was that Vinegar Syndrome? Right. 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 Questions. Yes. No, no. Questions. Some stuff. Yeah. 
But so they digitized all the film. Um, uh, the redirector, as it says in the credits, uh, Curtis Spieler, he uh, did most of the work on this. Um, he digitized all the film. He started his looked at everything he got. He started his rough cut based on all the stuff he had found all the footage from one scene, put together another scene, put together and whatnot, put in, put together a rough cut and then went back and he did lip reading on this entire movie. Oh my God. And from there did it. Not great job, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna kind of agree well, with you. Yeah, yeah I think lip reading's not that got hard. I you was know actually, what I'm I think you tipped me off on this because when when the movie first starts, it's very obvious that it's dubbed. So yeah. I'm uh-huh. like, is this an American production or is this a foreign film that's shooting? You know, because obviously all these fo- foreign film directors love to shoot in in New York. We're gonna yeah. go to New York. Right. That's yeah. your production value is just the city in the background. So I was like, okay, so is it American or? It's a foreign film. And then you're sitting there. You were like something about at like, some point. You're like, as long as you get the last two words, yeah, you're like some of the like, words <laughs> line up, but not most of them. Right. You then I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. And that actually did change the way that I was watching the movie, because uh, yeah. I think the first half of it, I'm like, OK, this is it's like sometimes they're landing the lines and sometimes they aren't. And who knows what the script actually was. Mm-hmm. But when you realize that they are not going off of a script, these guys are making up shit. Based on so it's like those hilarious uh, whatever bad lip reading right, videos. Yeah. That's what they're those doing to actually make up a plot. Then I mean, I wish I would have known that going into the movie. Ah. <laughs> it would have it would have changed the would way have, I yeah, watched uh, it. Honestly, yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, uh, dear Brailler, dear listener, we, I was trying to decide like what bits of information to mm-hmm. let go before we watch the movie because there's secrets to this and you don't want to give it all away. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, don't go look at the IMDb, okay? Because <laughs> well, yeah, first of say? all, IMDb lists this movie as being 2021. Okay, yeah. As the, yeah, but I didn't know that. So, uh, like, just looking this movie up and seeing 2020, I'm like, really Sean picked a movie have, that came out last year. It really should have both, 84, yeah. 21. And, but then right. the first line of the synopsis says, originally shot in 1984 and not finished until 2021. Uh, but you're like, I don't even know what the movie's about. That's not what the movie's about, and you're already telling me the secrets behind right, that's, it. That's you know? Reason. And I saw that, and I was like, damn it. I thought I was safe reading the synopsis, but I guess not. Like, nope. Mm-hmm. You're never safe. Oh, God, where was I? Um, So... So bad. What were you so, saying? Well, they're so they're lip reading. They oh, don't have the a lip script. Reading. Well, they they're didn't just, have a script. So I mean, the, like as far as the, I mean, like imagine this, right? You've got yep. nine hours of footage, and you're watching this, and you're trying to determine, like, okay, we don't, we have no, we have no Nothing. information. Mm-hmm. No. What information. is this movie about? Yeah. What is the plot of this movie? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they're just basically like, yeah, how? Th- th- this is why it took like two fucking. This is years. why it took two years to do it, <laughs> because I mean, once you get to like voice acting and stuff, that is technically the easier part of this. Yeah. Because he put it all together, he made his rough cut, and then from there he went through and, and did the lip reading on it, and he wrote a script based on that. So. This is crazy. It's crazy because we don't even like. Had John Liu finished this movie and everything in 1984, this could have been not completely different because it's, you know, the same movie, but a different movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, because now we don't, we have no idea, like, what scenes are missing. You know what I mean? Right. If there is anything missing, the order, because there's nothing yeah, to tell them what order it goes in. Right. They're putting it together in the, yeah, right? I mean. I think one of the, um, in the documentary, they do talk to one of the. Uh, quote unquote effects guys. There was a hundred dollar effects budget on this thing, but there are effects in the movie. He, I think they had some of a shooting script. He found some of a shooting script they had left over, but um, the director didn't look at it until like after he had completed his whole thing. Oh, wait, so were they and were I don't able know, to find some people who were involved in the movie. Some who people could tell them like, well, I read the script yes. back then. And this is basically the trajectory of the movie. Yes. Okay, a lot well, of people, it helps a little bit. I think they had like two people. One of the effects guys who was worked for probably like three days sporadically on and off. And then the reporter in the movie. She has an interview on the documentary. Okay. Um, so they do have everybody else didn't want to talk about this movie. Shocking. I know, right? <laughs> They're like, I don't want to talk about it. Or they didn't care. Didn't want to get involved with it. What have you. So they had two people in the documentary uh, who are able to talk about it. But this movie was a creation. In a, this is a Frankenstein movie. Well, yes, created in a lab. The, the other thing that we noticed about it, like when it gets to the end, because there's no credits uh, at the beginning, I don't think, really. Not They're really. at the end. And so, like, they have hired 
I don't know, recognizable names, yes. you know, from exploitation films to like do the dubbing. Yes. On the this voice. movie. Don the Dragon Wilson. That's John mm-hmm. Liu. Uh, Linnea Quigley is voicing in this. Cynthia Rothrock, Michael Berryman. Uh, those are the four top ones that yeah, I know. Leon There's Kennedy from yes. the penitentiary movies yes. and uh, Ginger Lynn. Ginger Lynn. Yeah. Ginger Lynn. Yeah. So, they, so they hired the voice talent to come in here and do these parts. They set it up the studios closest to wherever the talent was to have them come in and record. Yeah. And uh, they all dubbed their lines for this movie. Wow. Yeah. So this is a, what a project. Yeah, I know. But I mean, this is basically, this is, it's got to be like, you know, knowing that Vinegar Syndrome is going after and releasing just like every movie under the sun that you've never heard of. Sure. They're, they're going after these things that like, you know, it, at the time you would have passed over. Now they get to make one of their own. You know? <laughs> I know. It's like the ultimate. <laughs> it's like preservation, but then we get to like be a part of it. And yeah. Be a part yeah, of yeah. a movie's history at yeah. this point. That's like the this has got it's like the ultimate goal for them and their profession like this. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and so, 34 years later we have New York Ninja. There you go. Thanks to the tireless efforts of those folks over there. And a fun syndrome. fact about John Liu. In 1976, I believe it was, there was an exhibition match between John Liu and Chuck Norris. Get out. I kid you not. Who, Who won, won their video <laughs> evidence of this? There was there is there was an audience. It was filmed in front of a, a very large, or not filmed. It was in front of a very large crowd, not filmed. I don't believe it then. And they let the audience decide who won. Ooh, what? So it's a it's like wrestling, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> this is back it. on the circuit, you know, like yeah. the underground. I yeah. think this was like I think they said like ten years ten years after Chuck Norris retired, technically from oh wow doing this stuff, but they had an exhibition match, and John Lou won. <gasps> and they used that little bit of information in the uh, promotion for his movies further on from that point. <laughs> wow. Beat Chuck Norris in an exhibition match. It's yeah. set at the bottom <laughs> of movie oh things God. in newspapers and everything when they were uh, when they were promoting him by as the star of the movie. Vote. <laughs> hey, hey, t- whatever the technical There's a little asterisk on yeah. it. I feel it like by crowd vote. I feel like that's part of his like two truths and a lie, like during the get yeah. to know you <laughs> shit. There you go. Once beat Chuck Norris in an exhibition match. I might use that from now on, actually. <laughs> so John Liu is the original writer, director, the original and writer, star. director, and star and choreographer. choreographer yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. The choreography. What I mean, you think about the choreography. Uh, Power Rangers is what it reminded me of, like all the bad guys standing around waiting for their turn to take them on. It is now it's what, just well, kind of what do you hovering think about, what do you around think about John Liu, and what do you think about everyone else in the movie? Because John Liu is technically like the only quote unquote professional. Is he, he is well, he was known as one of the top kickers. Yeah, well, in that Hong I got. Kong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it's not impressive if you're not going up against someone that doesn't have the same level of skill. Exactly. This yeah. is true. But usually what they do when you make these movies, because I think this was the case, and we watched Miami Connection mm-hmm. before and several others, I think. I can't remember if Samurai Cop did this or not. Um, but Miami Connection, you get the guy who can actually is the martial artist, and then he brings like the folks with him who are like in his class. You know, and it's like, mm-hmm. OK, because, you know how to take my kick. Yeah. 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 Because mm-hmm. that's what I was kind of getting off of this. I was like, OK, he knows these people that he's working with, which would explain why every single street thug in New York City wears goofy masks and, you know, uh, tape over their faces and a sam- or, or samurai helmets and all this other stuff. Because it's the same six guys <laughs> representing like this right. horde of right. uh, yes, you know, mm-hmm. this roaming gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, they're all the same guys, just wearing. Uh, they masks. are. I don't think he knew them. Right. This is a small, <laughs> this is a very small production. I'm going to tell you, I don't think he knew them because uh, just based on the stuff that I've, uh, the, some of the behind the scenes. Was stuff. he a teacher? Did he teach martial arts? I don't think so. You're saying he was a he was film a, he star was a, at that point. But he was still competing, I guess, it sounds like. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, no, I don't think he was a teacher at any no. point. He was okay. a consummate student. He learned many different um, varieties of martial arts and everything, but I don't think he ever taught anybody. Okay. He taught Chuck Norris a thing or two. Oh! Mm-hmm. oh. <laughs> but I guess even to what Michaela was going to, it's like, I think if, if we would actually see like a Hollywood fight, like a professional Hollywood fight scene being filmed, you'd yeah. go like, wow, that looks really terrible. But it is about the coverage and camera placement and editing, yeah. which I don't think, again, I think if you're, and he's apparently not a first time director but when you're directing yourself 
like you're already handicapped because you can't right. see. Right, right. You know, unless mm-hmm. the person, the people who are working for you are like professionals. Mm-hmm. I don't get the impression that these people really knew what they no, were doing. No, not so much at all. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> feel like it, doesn't it? You kind of wonder why 21st century films went out of business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can't Just imagine. Take the money and and go. Yeah, yeah. All right, so there's a New York ninja in this movie. Eventually. Okay, so this is basically a comic book superhero movie, right? This is the, follows the plot of, like, Batman or something. Yes. Yep. Uh, I mean, it literally, it's, it, it's like you watch Batman just before making this movie. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Ironically, this is the same week that you guys are out there watching the Batman. Okay. <laughs> so, There's no pearls going flying in slow motion in this one, thank God. No, if but this one, was, this that would have been great. Yeah. Oh, this is, but this they, is bou- they bounced down the subway stuff. I was like, that would have yeah. been, per- been perfect because yeah. she got her throat slit. Yeah, I would have. Is this as she's tumbling? Yeah. Yeah. The railing? Yeah. Yeah, she t- tumbling in quotes for the listeners yeah, at home. Yeah, she grabs the rail and she's spins. standing yeah. and spinning. Yeah. I mean, well, instead of putting roses in an alley, they were put on a subway stop. So, yeah. yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. But this is like the goofiest. I mean, like I don't even know how to describe the tone of this movie that we that we, you're introduced to it right off the bat. These are what feels like non actors. Yeah. And I think it would be made better if you knew that like this was all bad rip, uh, lip reading the movie. Right. Uh. But because the the way that the dialogue plays, it's like somebody says a line, and then you either whip pan or cut to the other person, and then they say a line. And then you cut back the other person. Mm-hmm. And the, I mean, like the whole movie has that kind of it's rhythm. Very yeah. delayed reactions. Yeah. It's, yeah. Probably because we have to see what they're saying in order to read, you know, their lips, you know, the, the filmmakers. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So long takes. Who knew? John, yeah. right, yes. is a sound man for a TV station. Yes. Okay. Now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm you're doing, of, you're doing very well. Okay. I'm trying to uh-huh. intuit this out of the Colin movie. is also trying to recreate this film in his head. <laughs> yeah. And his wife, my wife comes to him at the very beginning <laughs> of the movie. And they're like, it's your birthday. Oh, like, Oh, this is so great. And I have the greatest present for you. What is it? I'm pregnant. Which Holly called right off the bat. Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> Thank you. And way to be in this movie's mind. Oh, You're I was in there it. going like, oh man, that doesn't say good things for her. And of course, <laughs> minutes later, she witnesses a mugging because it's New York City. New York City. Okay, like here's the thing. Like we have watched a lot of like, I mean, New York City in the 80s looks like the post-apocalyptic like city in the world. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. And it looks like Escape from New York. Yeah. 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 That's why yeah. he made that. In the yeah, 80s, like, in the 80s, New York City is a villain. Yeah. 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 I mean, it just seems like the city's infrastructure is been let there to rot. You know, it's like because mm-hmm. they go down in these subways and the bricks are off the wall. And the subway trains are completely covered in graffiti. And it's just disgusting. Mm-hmm. It's just it's gross. Like, there's a layer of grime on everything. And you're like, what? Do you not? This is the biggest city in the world. You don't have, like, the taxes to, like, hire staff to, you know, I, I don't know what was going I'm on. I'm curious, too. Did nobody give a shit? It feels that way. They were just like, there's too many people, and we just cannot deal with it. You know, there you go. but I feel like I mean that was how it was though in, the, in New York in the eighties, right? Like it was kind of famously like yeah, oh, yeah. really problematic like that. Yeah, like yeah, I, yeah, I feel yeah. like famously, it's, yeah. I feel like it's not an inaccurate portrayal. No, oh, no, yeah. I think that was it, and I think that also gave rise to all these movies where they could get away with anything. You know, the Warriors, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> like you know, what can you do? You know, there's there's not enough. Uh, uh, a th- right? civilian authority, whatever, to like oversee anything. It's no. the and wild the cops, west. The cops see like them uh, filming this and shooting like a mugging or something. Like, well, we saw that yesterday. Yeah, so it'll be fine. It's like, is he dead? No. Nope. Okay, we don't have to file a report on that. I mean, it's you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's uh, so um, make it very easy to go and just steal your shots. Yeah, around New York City. Yeah. No, they got bigger fish to fry. They don't care if you're filming a movie. <laughs> Right, people are. That guy got murdered. Right, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> murder happening right next to it. Well, it turns out um, that his wife does get murdered. Damn, she sure does. That's she right. gets her throat slashed. Yes, and then yes. thrown into her stomach, and she's pregnant. Yeah, and she <laughs> she like rolls down the subway. Yep. It does. Uh, 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 kind of like Pee Wee Herman and Buffy the Vampire. Yes, so. that's exactly <laughs> how it is. Yes. All right. Then a thousand characters are introduced. I mean, I guess the main gist of the movie is that John, having this trauma, is going to use it, his sorrow, which we get to see a lot of. A lot of. A lot of, yeah. And biting of cufflinks and whatnot. And he's going to right the wrongs and become the New York ninja. He wants justice. Justice. Mm. Yep. Mm. 
Yep. Yeah. Just like Batman. Wouldn't we all? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We do. But what does he want justice uh, again? Well, I guess the guys who killed his wife. Yes. And he does have one um, clue. Yes. As to who they are. And this is a cufflink. Yep. Because the Not guy, made of chocolate. Right. <laughs> okay. But there's a street tough later named Freddy Cufflinks. That's true. But and it's okay. Cufflinks are a theme. But here's the thing. But that's him. Yeah, that was him. Because he, in the credits, there was yeah. a different guy. That wasn't was a different guy. That was him. him. That was, was him. Cufflink no, guy. you guys were saying John Lou was biting on the Cufflinks, right? Yeah. 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 And then there was another character no, named but, Freddy Cufflinks. But it was his Cufflinks that he was biting. I know, but I'm saying there was like Cufflinks are a theme across two separate people in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the clue that's going to take you to your bad guy. And that's the other thing, too, about like the, the credits at the end of this. So that means they made up these characters' names. Oh, oh of course. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. there are no the names. Like, there's yeah, we, Rat Tail. Yeah. And yeah. There's <laughs> Rat Tail and Freddy Cufflinks. Yeah. Okay, so basically that's plot number one, right? Because at some point, mm-hmm. yes, it did feel to us like we were all of a sudden dropped into a second movie. But before we get there, I guess mm. plot mm-hmm. number one, right? That's the, the goal of the character is right. to find this other guy who killed his wife mm. right. get revenge. Right. And he thinks it's the, well, it was the gangs. So he's going after the gangs that are roving around doing a uh, lot of kidnappings. Right. It's ma- like mass kidnappings of women throughout New York. Yes. And As our newspaper d- headline. Another says. lady disappears. <laughs> another, lady van- another, another lady, lady vanishes. vanishes. Yeah. 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 But they're like <laughs> the craziest like 80s street toughs. Like they have like every random piece of Halloween costume you could have thrown on at right. once. Electrical yeah. tape, just clear tape. plastic yeah. masks, Hoodie, yeah. Just uh gauze across your face. Yeah. Uh jo- cups, sport j- cups, yep, yeah. jock straps yep. all over the place. Over the pants. Yeah. 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 Well that comes from wasn't it that was uh Clockwork Orange or Alice yeah, Cooper yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. That's true. Um But this but- isn't the future. Oh, well, that's true. This is the the, the <laughs> 80s, right? Yeah. Well, I guess unless you you could make the argument with the two dates, it was in the future, I guess, technically. It was a 2021 and a 1984 right, movie, yeah. so they just didn't know it yet. Yes. Yeah. They, uh, I mean, so all of this, if they're having all these uh, abductions, but actually that ties into something, that ties mm-hmm. into plot B. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. It all, it all, it's all connected. I mean, not a, really, because the reason why coherent story. The reason why she got murdered is because she was witnessing the abductions. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. This is, this, so it does tie in. Yeah. So there's another main villain in the movie, mm-hmm. who yeah. we find out is called the Plutonium Killer. Voice by Michael Bay. <laughs> yeah. Because why is he called the Plutonium Killer? Because he gets off on plutonium and then kills people. He That's... was exposed to plutonium <laughs> at some oh, point. Oh, yeah. Military experiments. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They do say that. Yes. No, it is? Yes. They do say that. Yeah. Okay, they say I missed that. It, it's, oh. a, it's a real quick line. There's, there's a scene when the dude from, like, Interpol or whoever he is, <laughs> yeah. is, is walking with him, and he's like, I've been undercover. Yeah. And yeah. Right. Looking into the plutonium right. killer. He had his, like, total, like, 30 seconds of random exposition that, that we had not gotten throughout the entire movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then all of a sudden, it's just, like, dumped on us. That's right. right. Yeah. Which should have come way earlier. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah. But, well, way yeah, earlier. I didn't understand, like, when we were first going through it, I was like, okay, I think prior to the scene where it's revealed that he has some kind of plutonium fixation that, you know, all these guys, uh, the, the bad guys drive around in, in limousines and they talk out of the back of, you know, window to window, kind of like a gray poop. I was going to say, it's a very great. I very thought gray first, I was like, are they going to do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very great. I mean, he is sipping champagne at one yeah. point. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. laughing while he does it too. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. It's that rich, like eighties guy laugh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That rich yuppie laugh. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and they're he, trading women. I well, guess. like they do treat it like trading cards. They, they do. have like they like have like headshots. these eight by ten headshots of all these women that they keep passing back and forth, being like, "I want these ones. I want these ones." Do you have any more? <laughs> yeah, but I thought he was a hitman. I thought he was going to go out like. Oh, I was like, this is a sex thing. Okay. Well, yeah, well, because this he says has to be a sex right. thing. Oh, yeah. Says, my clients thought. want all. Yeah, of my clients yeah. are hungry yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I was like, yep, this is human Man, trafficking. I, I did have like a terrible read on that. That was like, <laughs> he's giving him the contract, you know, and you got to go, you're right, but you're absolutely right. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, because he had the. Remember darts. the women later? Yeah. 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 Remember, yeah. The the Remember those dungeon? women in their yeah. underwear? Yeah. Well, well, we got there, yeah, but I'm saying that first scene because I was like, what's happening? And then we're shown a scene. And again, the scene is dropped into the middle of nowhere where this guy. Okay, so we should say that the uh, the procurer, whatever his name is, 
the well, who we, we later find out is the plutonium killer, yeah. wears these big, gigantic black sunglasses. Right. Yes. So he has a really distinct. Like, and they're set like of teeth. they're like goggles. Yeah. Okay. They're yeah. 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 They're like those glasses. They're aviators, but they the ones that they have the sides on that block all light on the sides of your face as well. And it has like the longer earpiece in the back that goes all the way down the bottom of the ear, which just is important. Sure. It's important later on. Yes, yeah. just to make sure they don't come yeah. off. Well, this is we're later told that he has like an aversion to light. Yeah. Yep. Because Doesn't seem to be true. I Not for very long. He wanders around during the day, but I guess it's maybe his eyes have an aversion. I think it's to his it. eyes. It's his eyes. Sensitive. That's why he wears the glasses. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, but the way they say it into his face. But they say it in the way of like his only <laughs> weakness is light. And it's his like only well, weakness. That's, and that's a big scene, fucking weakness to have. The next scene, he's in the light. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, yeah. They don't say his eyes. They say his weakness is light, which makes it sound like he's a vampire and he can't go out in the right. sun. That's what I yeah. thought. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so this scene dropped in. He's like in, it feels like a hobo shelter underneath a bridge. I don't know if that was actually true. That's the, again, the way I read it. Just the vibe you got from the vibe I got. And down there, he may have a television set down there too. I'm not sure. Maybe he was in the back of his car. That actually probably makes more sense. But anyway, he has a, uh, box and in the box is a glowing green thing. Kryptonite. Right. And he puts it, he's got burns all over his hands, which are like the worst makeup ever. Mm-hmm. And he Wait, touches what is, it. What does the label say on it? Like delicate unit or something? Delicate right? unit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Something. Uh, we're all looking at Holly. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's Holly's a, a delicate unit. I am a delicate unit. It's, it's true. Care yeah. Or yeah. Like that or, yeah. No, that's, treat with care. No, it's true. I should have that label on me. <laughs> delicate, delicate unit. Treat with care. Yep. And Very he true. reaches into it and then starts doing this like bug eye thing. Of, oh, he, and we it's see like his, his face. Yeah. Like it, it's like they wanted to do like one of them transformation effects yeah. where his face bubbles. So we see they put like appliances on his face, which is basically like wax paper. Yeah. yeah. It's really bad. And I'm and like, it's on his hands. Is he turning yeah. into something? Is that something that was now unclear missing from the unclear. movie? Yeah. Was that a transformation scene that was supposed to come later? Yeah. There, I don't um, know. This scene goes on for a long time too. Of him long just time. like, oh, it's very yeah. weird. He's very horny for this, yeah. which is what it feels like it every feels time I'm watching like, it. Yeah, yeah. It's, especially because you can't see his hands. You just see like the top half of his body. It looks like he's jacking off. Well, it does. yeah, because then later on he does it again when he's actually engaging in yeah. sex with a woman. Yeah, exactly. So. If it was sex. Which is another weird yeah. scene mm-hmm. because he goes and abducts a well, well he so his mo is to wander around he has these like sleeping darts he you know yeah. he knocks people out yeah. and then yeah well, he, the, he must have well, taken her back to the car well yeah. remember he it's oh, Halloween oh fuck he hypnotized oh I forgot her. about the Halloween he part oh my it's god Halloween yeah. because okay well we even got to back up because there's a kid oh, in this oh, oh my god there's a time jump <laughs> we've missed there's so much small child in this there's a okay, short round well, before yeah, he, we get there before we get there let okay. me yeah, ask John Lewis steals a child. <laughs> Did you guys know that the, he was the uh, like the the the, the plutonium killer? I mean, the, he was the same guy that you had seen in the back of the, the glass limo. No, it took yeah. a, it took me a while. Okay. No, it took All me a while. Right. It took me a while. That's where I was like, I had a hard time keeping track of people in general yeah. in this movie. It yeah, is, it took it, a long while. Yeah, because it's not clear. Mm-mm. Yeah, because he nope. he doesn't he never has he never like takes the glasses off when we see him and his horniness. Yeah, <laughs> but. I don't know. Yeah, we just never see it. Yeah. yeah okay. There's no clue that. So I was like, and there are, was that for all we know, we're cutting to some dude who's getting giggity with a box. Yeah. 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 And, and he's one of it. those. He's one of those guys that he can make his. He can distort his face. So like he's making different facial expressions. Wild faces, yes. Yeah, he's making different facial expressions when he's got the glasses on and when he doesn't have them on. Like he looks like a different person. And his personality and is different. Yeah. Whole other like B and C plots happen and wrap up in between us seeing him. Like we'll yeah. see him and then be gone for a long time and then cut back and be like, Oh yeah, that guy. Right. Well, Cause it feels like a lot of the movie in those, in those scenes. I mean, it was for a while. It's felt like it was just following like the same kind of thing. We'd see yes. like, here's plutonium killer doing something weird. And then, uh, the New York ninja or John would be out walking around and then he meets up with his uh, the camera his crew. Man, yeah, and the reporter. Right, because at some point they start doing a story on something. On all these attacks, and this ninja yeah. shows up because John's like slip, like Clark Kent and Superman yeah. goes out the back of the car, turns into the ninja, it's kicks the ass. Clark Kent. Yeah. And yeah. so it's just all fight choreography. And then at the end of it, it's like, where'd that ninja go? And John shows up going like, did I miss anything? <laughs> and then yep. it just that happened like three or four times in a row. Yeah. <laughs> So, we're also introduced... Okay, so there's going to be a kid. Yeah, well, tell a, us about the kid. There's a kid. 
So we meet a kid, comes out of the subway, he gets stopped by a group of these toughs. Yeah. And then lead tough comes over. They and literally like, shake him down for money. They do. They yeah. like turn some him upside high down school and, bullies. Yeah. Right, and see what came out. Yeah, that and dick then, is milk money. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then big tough comes over and is like, hey, kid, you owe me money. Pay up. And the kid's like, I'll pay you later. I'll pay you later. Which is yeah. exactly what he sounds like. And then he runs off to Colin's great confusion because he mm-hmm. didn't know. Yeah, because I'm like, is this like the lead gangster? Like he's, you know, controlling all these other gangs. It's not. There was a scene where a gangster came up and like demanded money of the other gangsters. Yeah. And then they gave him money. And then but he then was they, part of their gang. And I was like, what? And then the they fought John fuck? because John had been driven to his breaking point at this point. Yeah. And he decides to fight the gang. Yeah. The weird gang with the knife. Yeah. And the cups. Okay. You're as confused as we are <laughs> listening to this. Mm. But the, like, kid, mm-hmm. the kid runs off for right. a while. But until- when you. But. John sees this happen. He does. That's his first introduction. Right. To when the John kid. is laying down his flowers in yeah. the subway, the kid runs past him. And right. The gang does all their stuff to him. And, and the kid runs off. And then John shit happens goes to the park. That's where he fights the first gang. So, the general reason that the kid is in the movie, there's, a, I guess, a two pronged thing. Number one, we know that John has lost his uh, son or daughter, unborn kid. Unborn right. child, yes. Right? So, even though the movie doesn't do say anything about it you're supposed to get he has a paternal you know thing toward this kid so when the kid is shot (laughs) when they're both shot they're both shot john is shot in the heart (laughs) (laughs) in the heart just a surface wound though so we're good (laughs) he does dig that bullet out just off the surface (laughs) yeah but yeah shot in the heart kid is shot somewhere somewhere uh (laughs) And as Holly said, what you do in that situation is you drop the kid off because you, you, know, you got to protect. You take him home, take his shirt off, and rub salve on him. <laughs> yeah, because no, I got it was like okay, he's gonna save the kid's life because he needs a Robin. Because again, I'm not reading the Batman thing <laughs> into this. I'm like, okay. well, you're gonna have a sidekick, you know, and this is gonna be your Robin. Sure. Um, but I guess there is scenes where it's like, okay, is that what's happening? There's a uh, speedo. Uh, well, there's fishing. that after they get shot, and then what does it say? Several weeks later. Several weeks yep. later. Several weeks later, they, they are fishing. back to health. Yeah. Yep. They've, right. they've healed they together. <laughs> yes, and their bond grew stronger. Obviously, yep. Uh, yeah. They end up fishing, <laughs> fishing in the Hudson. So the well, oh, I he guess. just t- he takes the kid home. I just I can't I can't. He takes the kid that. home, and He's then we get kid. like a several weeks later, and it's Halloween, and we're like, and the kid's still with him. So I guess he like just he, adopted. He has, this he has kid. a kid now. he just took a kid off the street. Yeah. And is like, now you're my kid. Yeah. And we're going to do father-son things because together. Because this kid is like walking around like whistling. He's got pretty clean clothes. Like, I think he belongs to somebody. Yeah. But. Not anymore. Not takes, explained. Takes the kid. Maybe. See, again, all this, the stuff with the kid's parents was never shot, you know, and so they couldn't cut it in there. I don't know. So, it, you know what? The thing I about, could say like, it's possible to anything you say. But they yeah. couldn't even put it together in a way that like the kid, like either sticks around for long enough yeah. because later the kid basically forms like a little gang of I love New York ninja loving kids on the playground. So whatever this attack of these roving gangs that are just waiting to pop out of the bushes anywhere in New York City show up, the kids can form their little, uh, you know, like rah rah squad. Yeah. And they all have like fakes. They yeah. have fake swords. And I was going to say, are they fake? Because they do because those are training weapons. Okay. Those are actual training weapons. Yep. That's what so, they give the kids instead of actual real swords when they want to train them for sword fighting. So the police department of New York can't do anything about the crime, but these children can. Because the children are saying. there. The and they, right. They have the time. They have the, the They do have the time. They are this there. is true. This is true. They've got the time. Uh, where they're getting the geese, I don't know. Oh, they, yeah, because the, they, 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 yeah, they all go dr- around a corner and they come back dressed as ninjas. Yeah, they get them out of Ninja Magazine. You don't remember? Ninja I Magazine remember Ninja Magazine. Magazine. I, I remember you reading Ninja we've Magazine. We've talked about Ninja yeah. Magazine. <laughs> I think on, uh, what was it? Uh, Ninja Ninja 3. Probably. The, yeah. the domination. I think or we talked about uh, American, American Ninja. American Miami Connection. I think we talked about movie we've done. I think we talked about it on Sidekicks, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We talk about this on every episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll have to give that up. Um, oh, no. I love Ninja. <laughs> Never give it up, Colin. <laughs> Gonna go to eBay right after this. Get myself a copy of Ninja Magazine. Mm. Um, okay, so the kid, like, you know, basically just kind of shows up periodically for the rest of the movie. Yep. Not really a main force. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. But what we have to do is somehow drive uh plutonium man. Yep. The plutonium right. killer. 
into oh that's right the plutonium killer yeah, yeah right. what am i yeah. thinking get it right. plutonium man yeah, yeah. that's crazy he's d- he's done the work colin give yeah. him credit <laughs> okay so there was that sex scene well first of all wait 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 before before that <laughs> there's another like rando scene that shows up where i think it's uh uh cufflinks right freddie cufflinks freddie cufflinks <laughs> and his buddies are in a room that seems made up of uh ladders stacked against the wall with yeah. a bunch yes. of women just chained up, you know. Yep. It's like it might be a sewer, but it might be an industrial building. I'm not sure. Yeah, because it's a ladder that goes up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's weird. But it feels like an 80s music video yep. with women just chained yeah, up. Yeah, because the ladders are like, just like crisscrossing or yeah. it's some kind of like scaffolding or something it like that. It feels like that Colt and Cobra, their compound where they're clinging the axes yeah. together and they had the yep. fire going. That's what it looks like. Yeah. It's like German expressionism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to light it from underneath so these big spider webby shadows I, all over the place. But I love that his intimidation tactic is to scream, hey, shut up, in their face <laughs> as he walks by. <laughs> what are you looking at? Hey, <laughs> shut up. Yeah. yeah. That's it. He's very intimidating. Intimidating. So that's how. Well, at the point I guess that we see that we don't know what the fuck's going on. We're right. all sitting yep. around like, What's yeah, this is new. This no yes. context for this scene whatsoever. It's like at this point we know that women have been kidnapped, so we have to assume that's where they're being held. But they never say anything. No, there's no and direction. No, and we're introduced to new characters at that point, so yeah. we haven't seen them earlier. Right, so we're not connecting them back to this. It's a weird. But later they have a phone call with Plutonium Killer, who's like hired them to abduct the women. Right? Yes, because right. he's supplying them to the pale man right. mm-hmm. who is working for Interpol. Right. Yep. Okay, we we're on top of this. We, right? Yeah, we, we, got we got this. this. We got it. We um, got this. Okay. We so, could technically write this script and find some voice actors and <laughs> make this movie. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Tell me about this crazy sex scene. Crazy sex scene starts with a shot of hanging breasts. Now, that is one way <laughs> to start a sex scene. <sighs> Holly, how would you describe this? I mean, so he's getting. It's confusing. they're not sitting in a way where they could be having sex. I mean, I think they are. They are, but not. But so this is not right. the way it ends up. Okay, so <laughs> he takes the kid after several weeks. They're fishing, and eventually we get to Halloween. Mm-hmm. So they're hanging around on Halloween. They notice a guy with a clown mask, right? Who just happens to be our plutonium killer. Kid wants a clown mask, just like that guy's. Mm-hmm. And he, daddy apparently buys the kid what he wants because yeah. he's a good dad now. Um, but he finds a woman in the crowd, yanks her necklace off, and hypnotizes her with her own necklace. This is to hitherto abduct her. Yep. unknown uh, talent that he right. has. Didn't now know we have this. street yeah. magic being introduced. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, right? Didn't know this. And so then we cut to the car and the aforementioned uh, opening shot. And he's again, uh, uh, we're back to his horniness with the. Um, I almost said gamma radiation. What what is he? Uh, the it's plutonium. plutonium. Yeah, the plutonium, mm-hmm. and he seems to be doing the same thing again. Does he have well he flames in out. this one? He touches her and like burns her with his right. hands, and he's like freaking out and right. all this other stuff. And I think his face starts to like bubble and all that. Right. And we're like, what in the holy fuck is going on? And then like she's dead, right? And he then strangles her. He, he that's does right. Strangle he does strangle her. her. Yep. And then, like, you know, as he's in the afterglow the next morning in his limo. Uh, he just falls asleep after that in the yeah. back of the car like that. But these guys I mean, try he's to the thing up. you're afraid of if you fall asleep in a car, so I don't think he's got anything to worry about. No, because he's True. ready. Because, of course, because it's New York City, he gets mugged, but he's ready with his little <laughs> darts. It, look like a, it looks like yeah. a penny. He shoots that guy. And his rat tail bodyguard. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Who looks like. Bodyguard we, slash driver. Yeah. 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 Who Great may driver. be Daniel Radcliffe's dad. Or possibly, yeah, it, possibly Elijah he looks a Woods. lot like both of them. And, yeah. Okay, so let's let's put this in perspective. So picture Daniel Radcliffe playing the part of the thin man from Charlie's Angels, played by Crispin Glover. Yes, that is what we're dealing with. That is the combination. That's yeah. exactly what this is. Yes, I would and agree. that means that at some point our New York ninja is going to have to take this guy on. Who is this guy? He's, He's got a the, name. He, rat tail. Rat tail. Rat tail. Why is he called rat tail? Because he. It's Sorry. always when he has to like power up for a fight, he takes his rat tail and yeah. puts it in his mouth and like bites down really yeah. hard on Again, it. Again, yep. very much like Crispin Glover and Charlie's Angels, where he sniffs the hair he before he starts fighting. It would only have been better if this guy screamed like Crispin Glover right. did. 
I'm, I'm saying there's something there. You guys remember there. a lot about Charlie's Angels. The, no, that's a, that's a memorable character. Love, that is a memorable that character. That is a memorable character. Hair across his face. And he's like, ah, and he's got a time. sword, and he looks like that. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, there's a connection. Yeah. And you I'm did say you. that there was a version of this that was cut together and shown around. So who knows? Crispin Glover on his weirdo search. I wouldn't for, be surprised if Crispin yeah. Glover, of all people, had seen this movie. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't either. It's right. too close. What about the stunts in this movie? I mean, let's talk about the ninja action and the ama- amazing helicopter action okay. that takes well, place I mean, in this. First of all, I am insanely impressed by the one-footed kicking in this movie. There was, yes. He has incredible balance. There it's, is a full, it's like 30 seconds, but there are six guys solid. around that he takes out on one foot. One foot. He never puts kicking his foot down. With the same foot until he takes them all out in different ways. I... I've I, fact, I, I've taken yoga, and I tell you what, it is really hard to stand on one foot. Colin, right now, how long can you stand? It's on one foot? really, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, damn it, I'm going to do it now. <laughs> and you also must kick. Okay, I get that, right? I like I'm watching this guy, and I'm like, oh, look at he's got balance, and obviously he's got like a bunch of uh, stomach muscles that are doing helping him do all this stuff. And, sure, you know, but and so he can kick. Okay, there's a problem when your entire. The editing for these isn't very good, but I'm guessing that's because they didn't have very much coverage on these because it is all, I mean, it's most of it shot in a wide shot, which you can't hide a lot of things in a wide shot. You know, you can't cover up. We had the same problem with Bloodsport, right? Because Bloodsport, all all the fights were really wide shots and looked very unimpressive. And then the editing, that when they did have the coverage, the editing was just really bad. Yeah, Yeah, very true. You could see like, hey, we're not coming anywhere near these people with our kicks and all that stuff. I mean, this is one of those kind of movies. But I think like it's almost like his movements are... It almost like they feel too Tell loose that. or something too sloppy. I, I know it's horrible to say, you know, if it's like, well, this guy really was a maybe it's his clothes. His clothes are. I think well, it has I, to do with his opponents. I was going to say, I think it has to do with the the other guys. Because they're all just all, sitting there waiting. Like, I mean, yeah. it really is watching slow motion. Like they uh, are waiting to be kicked. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like, OK, I'm going to get over back, here. Turn so to can, a bad guy for five minutes and he doesn't attack you. That dude's just waiting to be kicked. What was the last movie we were talking about? It was kind of like uh, when you were kids and you used to, you know, play whatever <laughs> uh, ninjas and was, stuff like no, that. No, no, it was uh, Hard Ticket to Hawaii when you jump on the ground and go, cover me. Oh, that one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But when you have so, swords, so what you're you know. saying this is uh, this is kids ninja fighting? Yeah, I mean it kind of is. Kind of. But again, I think it is because of the opponents. I've seen some other footage of him in other movies, and he's fighting professionals, and it looks so okay, much better. Okay. Like mm-hmm. he don't let this be your only. I mean, it's going to be until you see something else. John Lewis is in, but don't let this be your uh, a litmus test for how good of a martial artist he is well i'm not doubting his good. abilities but it just right. when you're going up against people who can't do anything it yeah. doesn't it, it doesn't, it's hard it's to gauge hel- how good he is right you know? it's yeah. not yeah, yeah it's not helpful to him at all yeah. either yes well there was um you know because we were sitting there i think uh at least i was and like well there's not really a whole lot of stunts in this movie yeah there's a bunch of fight scenes it just seemed oh, yeah. just and you repeated. wait colin yes. and just you wait. hey don't forget about the roller skating roller right. skating okay. oh that's oh, right we forgot okay <laughs> This is his first endeavor out as the New York Ninja. Yeah, and this why did this not get used more or in a better way? Right? Why was he not standing up on one toe stop and kicking people with a roller skate? Uh, because been when he was on roller skates, that was a white dude <laughs> who could yeah. not skate very well. No, yeah, no, that's why. So no. I love that they put it in here for whatever random reason. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> the ninja on roller skates. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I really wish he would have kicked someone in the face with yeah, the roller skates. Yeah, it's great. Put that on the cover. This cover is amazing. It has like all the uh, the, <laughs> has every, all the iconic moments. Every moment yeah. from the movie. <laughs> but it does not have the, uh, no the roller, roller skating skates. ninja. Um, so, I mean, if you've lived your whole life and you've wanted to see that, this is the movie that has ninja on roller skates. Okay, yep. just it mark sure that does. one down. But he just skates around in the he doesn't yeah. do any ninja it's, stuff yeah. I, know, I was kind of hoping he kick somebody with it yeah. but then i was like well, he kick somebody with that you know, yeah. you know they yeah. have a problem and he does yeah. flip over a few things sans roller skates <laughs> yep and then they come back there's a couple of fights on top of buildings there yeah are uh, there's a, a fight on top of a building that turns into like three fights on top of a building yeah, yeah. like he's like oh we caught him oh i slipped away let's fight again because then they all circle him again yeah and they fight again and then he slips away and they fight him again. This happens early. This is earlier on in the movie when I guess he wants to show off his skills and we haven't gotten past that portion yet until the other plot lines kick in. I know this is all very thin when I say plot lines. <laughs> well, there's a lot of scenes that also kind of feel like unfinished. So that's why it was like, okay, did that scene end? 
because then we right. cut away to another scene, uh, you know, featuring different characters. Then we come back, it seems like, and then we're like, are we picking up on that scene that we left off? It's very confusing. Right. We do leave some where it feels like, oh, there should be more. And then we don't come back. Yeah. I think Holly actually was saying during the movie, it's like this movie feels like you're studying yeah. You know, for a test because yeah. you're shown scenes. You're like, OK, I'm going to have to remember that for later yep. when it makes some kind of sense or comes back into this plot in some kind of way. Yeah. Yep. There's a stunt involving a helicopter, which I have to say <laughs> surprised the hell out of me. Because oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like on this budget level, they go to a helicopter field and, the, you know, the bad guy, Plutonium Man, has the uh, damsel in distress. Yes. He's dragging her along mm -hmm. and they keep trying all the doors of the helicopters, but they're all locked. And he's yeah. like, damn it. You know, he's got to go get his. And I'm like, that's because they couldn't afford to actually get in a helicopter and then they do which, they, well, which they surprise. did start the movie with a helicopter landing and a that's yeah. true they did so oh, damn. Uh, that's, that's our true. fault that i think we should have expected like more yeah. it was it and, was but so, i was with you because i was like there's no way a single blade <laughs> okay turns on that helicopter. but which surprised you more <laughs> that they actually got in a helicopter and flew or that fucking stunt man hanging from the helicopter that's i don't think that was a stunt man well, i mean I, john luke was stunt yeah i think that was john luke doing that yeah that, that was, they went horrifying to they were yeah. they Mikhail were high like, no, 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 no. Yeah. they were really high they yeah were very high. and like <laughs> he's relying on his upper body strength to last as long as he needs to to hang on to this rope dangling from a helicopter over the hudson river like yeah because no thanks i'm like is he does he have like because i mean you know if you're doing this for real you'd have a harness you know mm -hmm. going somewhere yeah. up your clothes i'm like maybe he gets but it on seemed a like rope he grabbed it and then the helicopter took yes. off and Which, then it's like oh shit what are we you do? see him adjusting his grip a lot which makes right. me think he's like uncomfortable which and getting tired like doesn't mean he didn't on the rope there wasn't like a, a clip of some sort when he was know, when but, he was hanging from like the bottom of the helicopter like about to get to the door you he what there was a clip okay, on him yeah yeah it, it seemed Still, like the rope had some things yeah, on it there was a could, clip okay. on it and then it seems like they let the scene go on a little too long because the helicopter starts to turn back around. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, and it looks I like... I saw it going away. I'm just like, Whoa. Oh, yeah, but then it does like a little circle and you think like, oh, they should have cut it because they're going to come back and land, right? Right. But then, and then it turns around again and starts going out farther and you're like, oh, oh, yeah. I don't like this. Is there like <laughs> radioing to the pilot? Like, what are you going to do? Am I? Okay, but it just does seem like they go out over water. Yeah, right? yeah they oh, do. Yeah. For sure yeah. do. Okay. Definitely. So it's like, okay, we're going to take you out over water. So in case something bad yeah. happens, at least if you, you need to drop, you can drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, well, this is, and that all happened after the uh, plutonium killer has ripped his face off. Oh, now, right. To get to this, That's we got to right. back up a little bit. His own bit. face. His, well, no. no he's no. wearing somebody he's else's wearing face. He's wearing somebody else's face, Colin. I forgot which, about this. If I had had my way, would have been a constant over this movie. He right. keeps changing faces. Because that comes out like of Dark nowhere. Man. Yeah. And then he goes, it would be like he goes nuts every time he takes it off. And then we could cut to the horniness when he's by himself. Yeah. That would almost make more sense. But uh, at some point he's back in his lair looking at pictures and he's got a picture of the cameraman that has been running around this whole time um, with uh, bloody eyes and he's burning it. Now, oh, so that was like some kind of ritual, giving uh, him the bloody eyes okay. in the picture. Yeah. So he could like hex him. I think some so he could take his face. I think so. Did a lot of extrapolation. Yes. Yes. See, Ooh, we don't because the is, movie doesn't is, say anything. But he reach. does show up later. Like the cameraman shows up as the plutonium killer, and the way that this actor embodies that he has been um, um, taken over, that he is now the plutonium killer, is pretty fun. Like he's got a uh, a malleable face as well. Yeah. Like he's he's having a good time with it. He's it got seems. a new swagger. He does. He does. Yeah. This should have been a constant thing throughout the movie. Did that character ever show up later? I think he ran away after the rooftop fight, and I ha don't remember seeing him ever again. So maybe he was killed and the killer took his face. We don't know. Quite possibly. I mean, who knows? Or he just got a picture of him and he's like, I will take over. Because nobody else would. Nobody else knows he's dead if he is dead. Yeah, okay. Wait, so the, the camera guy? Yeah. He's dead. How is he dead? Uh. Oh, hell, he's, hell he's got yeah, this. What no, do you got? When he was jogging. Oh, when, yeah, they got him was in the jogging. Neck. They got him in the neck when he was jogging. Remember? Nope. Nope. Like, don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, and, he, and he falls. He yeah. falls into the street, and then there's a car that like stops, and you and you're like, oh, oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. they okay. think that person's actually hurt. Yeah. 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 Unless you yeah. want to take a shower together. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 Yeah. right okay. And he does get in the neck. Very good. Boom. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was walking, watching the background action. Apparently, and didn't yeah, see what was I was too. Right yeah, because there is a car that like stops when they see that guy drop and like back up a little bit. Like, oh shit, do we need like, to help this, this person out? Okay? Yeah. 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 I love those moments. Oh, I like right. to think that he's on the ground going like, go, go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's a movie. It's a movie. It's a ninja movie. Um. 
Well, this does. Okay, so and then we got uh, change of face, and yes. he pulls that off, and, and then, because he's defeated by uh, the light, uh, or not defeated by, but the that's mirror. What, the mirror. Right, he gets his shades off, and then he gets mirrored in the, he can't, in the eyes. Uh, you're right, right, light in the eyes. It's bad for him. Yeah. And then we have the big mono y mono. Well, do they? They do fight like for a little bit. They do, but that's prior to getting on the the helicopter and this hanging off the bottom of the helicopter thing. Right, and then. The ninja, like, ninjas his way up the rope into the helicopter, and then he falls out of the helicopter, and then we hear an ADR line of, like, what's that sound? Is that a bomb? And the helicopter explodes, which looks like post-processing, like, later on, like, this is how we're going to end the movie, guys. There's vinegar syndrome. Yeah, I I think this is a vinegar syndrome (laughs) choice, because they said in the thing that it didn't, the ending didn't really feel like a great conclusion to the whole thing. So maybe the helicopter just like flew off. And we have nothing left. And like we that's it. And, and there's that no was other it. scene like, we can pull right. from somewhere else in order to So I think they blew it up. What is that? A bomb? <laughs> Unexpected. <laughs> yeah. Unexpected. Bomb? Boom. I mean it's a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're dead. The ninja has jumped and he's uh, hooked himself onto some sort of bridge. <laughs> Yeah. He grappled onto something. He did. He uh, grappled onto something on his way yep. off the helicopter. Oh, yeah, because this whole time there's a detective like, oh, yeah, there's working a, with him. There's a <laughs> detective the working with him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did forget about that. The guy. multiple yeah. cops. Yep. There's too many characters. Yeah. In this thing. The <laughs> one detective amazing. gets taken hostage with the other girls, and then there's the main detective. There are, the other girls are getting moved a lot. Yeah. In and out of the same archway on the, the grounds of some yeah. sort. Yeah. Because the one detective figures out who the New York ninja is somehow. Yeah, he's like, I know who you are. I know who you are. I need you to Let's help Let's work me. together. Like, you want to bring them in. I want them kids dead. kids do show up like, again to I want save justice. the day. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it's a... Uh... It's a chore. <laughs> it's... <laughs> do you still feel like you were studying for a test? <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm going to fail this test. Yeah, this, was the, this is the, the regurgitation of the... of Yeah, it's like, okay, I got this, right? I right. feel like we're just cramming right movie, now. But, yeah. Okay. You could show me five clips and say, hey, which one, tell me which one of these is not in this movie, and it'd be very difficult. To, yeah. We might play that guess. game. We'll just yeah. Yeah, have a shot from, like, uh, Ninja 3 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Ninja 3, my right. connection... And uh, this movie. Well, so, also, well, Ninja Three: The Domination had a little cameo. It does. In this movie. It was apparently yeah, yeah out at this a, time. Yeah, they go by a theater, movie theater. Yeah. With, it's got a big marquee and everything. Yep, on Forty Second Street. Yeah, I mean, like but the, this does have like that that era New York yes. City, like the Strip. Okay, down there and, but that yeah. brings us to my ne- my final question about this movie uh, is the movie ends where you know if first Ninja's taken by the cops and then. The kids show up and mob him, and he escapes through the crowd of kids or yes. whatever. Like Batman. Like he, Batman. He just, he <laughs> like Batman. Slow. Yeah, the slow. <laughs> but then frame. the last frame of the movie, freeze frame, jump in the air, will return in Ninja LA. Or in LA, Ninja. LA Ninja. Sean, do you have any insight on this? <laughs> that is... That, that is, is vinegar, still out there? That, no, that is Vinegar Syndrome kind of putting the exclamation point on the movie because we've all seen that before right yeah. okay that's so. not okay. fair you so can't it's, tease it's us not like fair that. so it's a joke it's, is what you're telling yes. me <laughs> i'm sorry it's a joke it's a joke is this I funny thought it you? Was a good joke <laughs> <laughs> la ninja i'm LA like ninja. come on which is but that is every other ninja movie but you had point. the insight in of the background going into this movie those of us who did not <laughs> fell for that oh, and thought oh, it was no, real I'm yeah. sorry. yes i'm so sorry <laughs> I, I was like there's thing. more yeah <laughs> i was like hell yeah i'm let's sorry do it. to yeah. disappoint you there is no <laughs> la ninja until we make it oh, oh. Yep. oh. So i say we cut up this movie and uh, no, give us that extra eight hours yeah. of footage you didn't use, and we'll make LA Ninja. Right? There's got to be like a yeah, shot of a palm tree. We just, we'll just cut out scenes. We just, we just got to cut out the Twin Towers stuff. Yeah, we just cut yeah, out all New York skylines. Yeah, we're good. Easy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, why not? Then we buy some other movie and splice them together. Yeah. I mean, that's never been done before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get some palm trees. We'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. There we we okay. got this. <laughs> well, Done. I tell you what, thank you for sticking with us this long through our dis- dissection <laughs> of New York Ninja, but we're going to tell you whether or not we would recommend that you watch it. It's always the most exciting part of our show. But before that, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to need to summon the help of our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. 
Why, thank you, Igor. Hey, thanks, Igor. <laughs> he brought his gi. I mean, he's, yeah. Yeah. That's all I got for Igor. <laughs> all right, well, I guess we should let the He's not very home. fast, though. Like, no, I know. He's a very slow ninja. You need to work on those with him. Have you been training with him? Uh, every day. <laughs> well, Good. something's not now. Working, uh, right? Well, but Colin's not very fast either. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's just got. He's just got to be able to outrun you. Unless you get up and start kicking on okay. one leg right now. Next <laughs> week, one leg kicks. All right, okay. <laughs> done. Um, all right. So first of all, I guess we should let the food, get the good folks at home find out how they can uh, get a hold of us. Uh, that you can follow along on Facebook, facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show, or Twitter at Sat Freak Show, or email Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Well, first of all, we got a review here from uh, oh. Dave G seven 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 seven. That's a lot of sevens. Uh, it says uh, there's a lot of movie review podcasts out there, but this one consistently remains one of my favorites. Holly, Michaela, Colin, and Sean each have their own unique personalities and perspectives. But the one thing they have in common is that they are all entertaining and so much fun to listen to. I've heard other podcasts where hosts tend to talk over each other or just don't mix well. But the Saturday Night Freak Show hosts have a brilliant chemistry together. Aww. I do find the show has been at its best since Holly and Michaela arrived. <laughs> and I'm giving the podcast five stars. Ooh. One for each of the four internet radio superstars and a fifth for Igor. Yay! Yay. Yay. <laughs> He's kind enough to give them mail every week. Oh, oh thank that's you. That's so nice. Holly, we're five star men. We're five star men. <laughs> 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 Igor, you got a star. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Dave. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's so nice. I appreciate it. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Uh, about tonight's movie, New York Ninja. Well, first of all, um, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak <gasps> Show. What? Oh. What, we put vinegar syndrome on the wall or something? <laughs> <laughs> we put Michael Berryman on the wall. Yeah! That's, right. that's good. You know what? I'm glad that this movie could do something like that. Yeah, yeah I know. Because we're never going to get around to the Hills Have Eyes, I guess. But no. he was in uh, The Giver, <laughs> the which we did. No. We did The Giver. Yeah, we did yeah. The uh, We did The Lords of Salem. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we did New York New York Ninja. So uh, oh, welcome up. There we go. Well deserved. Yes. Well, about this movie, uh, Adam Kaler writes in and says, Wow, this movie is like Dirty Harry, Rumble in the Bronx, Xanadu, The Warriors, <laughs> Oh God, Book 2, and Police <laughs> Academy 2, their first assignment, all rolled into one. <laughs> Xanadu, wow. love that call oh, out. The roller skates, yeah. I like great. the Oh God reference. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Police says, Academy? You, yeah. <laughs> well, he says, if you look at the budget, I'm sure it all went to the bad wigs and the I Heart New York stickers. Mm -hmm. This oh, really yeah. seemed yeah. like a Canon Films movie to me, but lost in time. It does feel yeah. like it, it should does be a canon, canon movie. Movie. Yeah. yeah, but canon movies are better. They are. Movies. They are <laughs> a little like a step above this one for sure. I mean, that's a that's that's a great that's a great combination of movies. My, mm -hmm. What did we say? We said uh, Samurai Cop in the room. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says this is probably one of the only times Ginger Lynn and Michael Berryman were hired just for their voices. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Yeah, yeah those yeah. two especially. Yeah. Uh, Peter Gant. I wonder says, if he was excited when they were like, "Hey, Mike, you want to do a voiceover? <laughs> yeah, you're not playing like a weird yeah. mutated freak for once. You want you for yeah. your voice? He's yeah. like, really? Yeah. <laughs> He's a really nice convention guest. Yeah. Well, Peter Gant says this needs to be a trilogy along with Australian Ninja and Maltese Ninja. Oh, do those exist? Is that oh. I don't know, but I sure, mean, why, why not? not? I mean, Maltese exists, Ninja. What the Maltese, Maltese Ninja? The Maltese Ninja, All right. and LA Ninja, of course. Of course, yeah. obviously. The, the quadrology. Uh, about last week's movie, Horror Express. Robin Linneman Silverberg says, "I watched this last night, and the best actor was the poodle." <laughs> Until Telly Savalas showed up as a Russian captain with a decidedly non-Russian accent. Indeed. I mean, yeah, he brings a whole new energy to that movie. That's for sure. He does. Uh, the previous week, we watched a movie called Doom Asylum. Brett Williams mm. uh, wrote in and says, I've been thinking of canceling my Arrow video subscription. Of, they have a, so they have a channel. They have also. a channel, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, as I hadn't watched anything on it in a few months. But since I didn't, I can take Michaela's recommendation mm. and watch the Doom <laughs> Asylum. And I guess this means I should also watch Slaughter High, too. Yeah, yes, definitely. Oh, yeah. Do a double do, feature. Do, do the double feature and tell us what you think. Oh, oh Sean, are you saying someone should watch Doom Asylum? You would recommend it? Watch Slaughter High and then run off into the night. All right. Uh, <laughs> Don't watch Doom. <laughs> well, Travis Legler says, I'm with Michaela on this movie is why the freak show and movie parties <laughs> exist. They're goofy, fun movies. They feel like the movies that get people to say, maybe we can make a movie and have fun. Mm, so they're yeah. inspirational. 
Novato Judoka says, I'm on Michaela's side on this one. This movie is good <laughs> junk food, not good for you, but you eat it. Something about this <laughs> East Coast grimy type of movie that gives me up all night vibes, up. and I give oh, yeah. a pass to. There yeah. you go. It does feel very gross New Jersey, yeah, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Mm. It does. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a place called Gross New Jersey. <laughs> gross New Jersey. Why not? Yeah. I've smelled it a few well, times driving past New Jersey. Yeah. Novato Joku, also known as Johnny New Jersey, let <laughs> <Yeah>. us know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to besmirch your name. <laughs> and uh, sorry Maurice, to say besmirched. Maurice or Morris uh, says Kristen Davis is in a one piece and glasses. Oh, mama. Also, the music that the band is playing in Doom Asylum uh-huh. is considered to be experimental punk, noise rock, or industrial music. Mm, Probably yeah. the coolest part of the movie, next to Kristen Davis being bone sawed. <laughs> and thanks for the entertainment. <laughs> noise rock industrial. That's a good description. Yeah, that is a really good one. Yeah. Then. What do we say? The screamo. noise, especially. Yeah, noise, noise part is noise. Russian screamo, yeah. I think we Russian called it. Russian screamo. Yeah, okay. something like that. Got a bitch. All right, so uh, thank you again, all of you, very much for writing yes, in. We appreciate, we appreciate it, it every week. And uh, now we're going to go around the We're going in order, Colin! <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> what did you think about tonight's movie? And well, what did you think about 1984's movie and 2021's movie, <laughs> New York Ninja? And the sequel that will, apparently doesn't exist and was a cruel joke on all of us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cruel joke. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. I don't know. I'm... Uh, I mean, my I guess my impression was that I didn't like it. There was a point in during the movie, you know, it's like you get the it's like, OK, so basically this whole movie has been constructed as a joke. Right. This is like an in joke for specifically. And I guess I do count myself in some ways part of this group, which is Vinegar Syndrome Collectors, where, yes, I have bought stuff that I've never heard of. Based on, you know, uh, something that shows up on my feed or something that gets me interested in it. You're like, okay, I'll give this a shot because you can't find it any other way. And so then you blind buy the thing and then you're like, oh, no, Uh, (laughs) you did blind buy this. I did blind buy this thing. (laughs) Because of, yeah, okay, so their marketing is working and they're basically, you know, they came across this uh, stash of of, uh, stuff and they're like, we can make our own movie out of it that's going to cater directly to this audience. So it's like, okay, I get that. But it seems like, yeah, you need to know that it, you know, get the jump going into it. Like I said, you know, uh, it would have probably played better to me if I knew that it, the whole thing was being lip read. Um, it's an inept movie. It's really, really bad. Uh, so, I mean, like, I don't know. I, there was a point in it, I guess I was going to say that it, uh, I got bored with it. I think it was like, mm-hmm. I just kept seeing the same thing happening over and over again. And then it was the okay, I'm like trying to cram my brain full of incidents that are going to pay off or are they, or does this matter at all? And so that's just the way I watch the movie, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's like, it's technically bad. It wasn't like, there wasn't enough crazy stuff happening all the time to make it, you know, like a good watch. The last one, I think that we did, you know, hard ticket to Hawaii really did. I think when we were watching hard ticket to Hawaii, Sean's like, this is like a real movie. And I, I know that it's a bad movie, but it's like at least the people kind of know how to put a movie together. And this one, I get that they're handicapped by the fact that they there's no movie to put together. Mm-hmm. They're just like assembling footage. Right. So I would not look at this movie the same way right. as Hard Ticket to Hawaii. Should they have put it together? I mean, you don't have a movie there. I guess that's ultimately the thing is like even Miami Connection has more of a movie uh there than this does so it's just kind of <laughs> all those movies had sound right yeah, like sound. this had no sound the so Miami like, connection to a spectacular monologue yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. soundtrack yeah the writing and soundtrack on that mm-hmm. and michael yeah. phelps yeah i guess i don't know i mean it's just it's the the it's a joke to see it you know that is the point and mm-hmm. so it's like I don't know. I, I, and again, it seems like a little bit of it would have gone a long way if it was shorter. If it was one of them 20 minute things that you see online somewhere, it's like maybe that would have been uh, within my uh, attention span, but it just kept on going like I am. And so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say you can pass on. Who put New you York together, Colin? Ninja. Yeah. <laughs> Michaela, what'd you think? <laughs> All right. New York Ninja. So I'm not a ninja movie person. That whole thing missed me. I didn't grow up watching ninja movies. I was not a sidekicks person. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's not my thing. Mm-hmm. But I am a mystery science theater person. <laughs> yes. And yes. I think this, I need them to do this movie on yeah. mystery science. I would watch sure. like, yeah. the shit out of it. For uh, sure. <laughs> so I think if you like, you know, Samurai Cop, Miami Connection, Hard Ticket to Hawaii, those have all played well for you 
before. This is the next logical step, I think. I mean, it is much less incompetent than Hard Ticket to Hawaii, but I would say Samurai Cop's probably on the same level of incompetency as this movie because that just like the wigs and the 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 blue frames and the red flames and the the that just go back and watch Samurai Cop. I can't even remember half the things that happened in that movie. Yeah, but. <laughs> it's i mean you watch it because it's a spectacle and i like a spectacle mm-hmm. so i think i'm going to recommend it not because it has anything to do with ninjas or <laughs> i care about any of that but because of the spectacle part- and the unique event but partly is. because there was a roller skating ninja yeah i mean the ro- i mean it would have been cool Doesn't if it hurt. did something but it yeah i it's <laughs> it's insane and it's a it's a weird time capsule moment that probably won't happen again and you know i hope someday that i can buy a storage unit or a trunk at an estate <laughs> sale and find a reel of an amazing movie and and sell it to vinegar syndrome and then be like i saved this movie for you people you're welcome i'm a film historian you only sell it to them if i'm in the contract attached to put it all together well i'm gonna, <laughs> like they have to give me yeah, a job i'm gonna well. make the title sequence obviously okay, yes. right yeah so yes, colin you're gonna yeah. do voice yep. you guys yep. want a dub yeah holly you can help me write it yeah. obviously yeah. Yep. yeah yeah so i mean I would love that. And then I started going down a rabbit hole of like, is there, why don't we make a movie about the people that find these movies? Yeah, I know. Oh yeah. You know, where's that movie? Yeah. yeah. So I yeah. thought that yeah. before. Yeah. Like, uh, whenever you hear these stories, these guys like tracking some movie down yeah. to like some vault and you mm-hmm. know, somewhere it's like, man, that would make a movie. Wouldn't yeah. It? That's your movie. Give me yeah. national treasure, but it's yeah. finding movies like right? hard ticket yeah. to Hawaii. Well, you got to find that one guy who's just like, yeah, I have that. It's on a VHS tape and I think it's in my garage and there's a whole like adventure to go get it. And shit. Yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. Wait, did John Carpenter do that? Was it cigarette burns? That episode of masters of the horror where the guy had to track down a movie? I don't okay. know. I haven't, no, I haven't seen, seen it. it. Yeah. It was Norman Reedus. Okay. No. 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 <laughs> no. I haven't seen it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, if you've heard us talk about it, you know what it what it is. It's you know what to expect and what level of competency to expect. Uh, I mean, I guess like I don't know if I'd say buy the Blu-ray that's sitting on the table here that we're looking at, but you know, <laughs> check it out. What can it hurt, <laughs> Holly? Um. So watching this movie. By the time we finished it, I was ready to not recommend it. <laughs> However, hearing the backstory about it changed my mind. The, I Because I agree with Colin. Is that, that what it is? Is it the combo of the yes. backstory with the movie? Yes, that's Maybe what so. it is. I would have that's what it, it is. Yeah, okay. if because I, I agree that. with Colin. Watching it, like just straight out watching it, not knowing anything, I was pretty bored. There wasn't enough to it to keep me entertained. It is ridiculous. It's completely incompetent. There are parts that were so bad and ridiculous. I did laugh, but again, like I agree mm-hmm. with you, it wasn't enough to keep me engaged at all. So by the end of the movie, I was not ready. I was ready to pass, full on pass. But then hearing the story about it, I love that shit. <laughs> I absolutely love that shit, and it does give me more of an appreciation for what we watched. So I'm gonna say, after to our dear Brailers, after listening to this podcast and hearing the story. Now you can go watch now it. You, yeah, there, now you, you go. can go watch it. There you go. Um, just to go into it blindly, I don't think I'd recommend it. But for this scenario, I'm going to recommend it. Okay. Sean. Well, I think we've learned some lessons here tonight. I know I have. Maybe a little <laughs> information is good. Because you studied for the test. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I studied for this one. Um, so, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend it. I bought it. But I think, like we all discuss, it is the combination of the movie and the journey it took to get here. And that whole thing together is, um, like we said, it's spectacle. Mm -hmm. Um, And like Holly said, I love that stuff too. Um, You know, the movie is basically everything Colin said. Like, it's not not a good movie. It's lacking in some area. It's lacking in a lot of areas. Um, There's still fun to be had. I laughed. Out loud a lot. I don't know what kind of laugh you'd call that. Uh, was cackle? it a teehee? It was a little <laughs> bit of a cackle, a shortened cackle. Um, I had fun with the movie. Um, I had I had fun with this whole experience, and I think that's what it is uh, an experience. Um, I think the only way right now to watch it is to buy the Blu ray. I'm going to say you do it because it's got all the pieces on there. It's got the story, it's got the movie, it's got where it came from, it's got the history. Um, it even gives you a pretty great history of John Liu in the documentary as well. So, you're going to get a lot out of this, even if it's not the well, the most well-made movie. Um, so yeah, I'm going to recommend it. Uh, I had fun. It's spectacle and story. Um, I think it's kind of like 
it's kind of the ultimate of these things of you know, places like vinegar vinegar syndrome and what we do here and the movies we watch. Um, yeah, I think you should watch it. I think you have to. So yeah, I'm gonna recommend New York Ninja. And there you go. That's New is. York Ninja. Bam. Now I want to see the intro that we skipped when we <laughs> right. you're like, okay, Colin, if you'd like to borrow it, watch tell the special us features. You, you told can. us. Oh, there you go. Uh, all right. So next week we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. You said some things about this movie before this podcast. <laughs> what are we watching next week? We're staying in the 80s. Ooh. And we're going to watch a movie called Without Warning. Oh, shit. Is that Martin Lando and, and Jack, Jack Palance? Palance. Yeah. All right. I'm, yep. in, I'm in based on the movie? cast. <laughs> I wonder if I've seen this movie. We're going to get weird with it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Without Warning next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.